Hey Cinemals Fire, I feel like we're pretty well acquainted with the internet at this point. Like, we know its pros and cons, and we can see the potential of online communities, but we still know that we should shrug off the trolls. But lately I've been feeling like one of the negatives of online communities might be getting worse, and that's the echo chamber effect. Studies have found that liberals are more likely to have liberal friends, and conservatives are more likely to have conservative friends, and that's really nothing new. But sites like Facebook and Twitter have given people platforms for their opinions, meaning that now the person who would have otherwise just been an acquaintance that you never would have talked politics about is all over your newsfeed telling you all about how Obama is literally Hitler. And if you don't like those views, it's trivially easy to unfriend them or block them or do whatever, and it's probably a good thing. There are some people you just don't need in your life. But not everyone is gonna be that clear cut, so how do we know the difference between a dissenting opinion and someone trying to make a toxic environment? It's totally normal to seek out like-minded individuals, that's where most online communities start. But sometimes I kind of wonder if my social networking isn't making me too insulated. Like, we're all tossing around the same ideas, and instead of growing, we're just stagnating. And stagnating isn't even the worst case scenario, we're seeing this over and over again. People getting harassed or threatened by people who claim to be working for social justice or citizen rights. They're part of communities that may have started with noble ideas, but they shun any outside opinions. Dissenting voices are immediately labeled trolls, and they view any disagreement as further proof that what they're doing is right. And a great example of this is the small but very vocal group of Tumblrites who just hate Hank and John and everything they stand for and take every opportunity to let people know. Which, by the way, I'm constantly surprised that they not only acknowledge it, but respond to it. And that's exactly my dilemma. How do you respond to these people? Should you respond to these people? Most of them have no intention of actually listening to what anyone outside of their circle has to say, so it doesn't seem like there's any point. But then by ignoring them, are we just contributing to our own echo chambers, shutting out any outside opinions because we don't like them? And if I do argue with them, am I arguing just because I want to argue, or because I actually think that what I have to say is important and that I can sway them? The other thing, and this is gonna make me sound old, is that some of these people will legitimately grow out of this. A lot of these people are young people who are at an age where everything is important and they need something to latch onto. They need something they can do to help change things. Like, did you ever notice on a college campus how there always seemed to be a protest going on? Like those Darfur signs that were always hanging around and then a year later none of those people said anything about it ever again? Something I noticed in undergrad is that there were always people on campus trying to recruit people for causes because a lot of people in undergrad are at a stage in their life where they really want something to latch onto and they're getting all of this education and they're finding out that there's more to the world than they thought there was and they want to do something about it so they just latch onto the first cause that comes their way. And they are by no means all like that but did you ever actually stop to talk to any of the people that were holding signs because a significant a portion of them didn't really know a lot about the thing they were protesting, they just knew that it was bad and that they were on the right side. But on the internet, you don't know if the person who's attacking a writer or using race-based logic to somehow fight racism or saying that all pronouns are actually ableists and need to go away, you don't know if that person is just some kid who likes the attention or someone who's actually been inside this echo chamber for so long that they just don't care what you have to say. So who do you engage and who do you ignore? Whose opinions are worth considering for yourself to make sure that you're being fair and reasonable, and whose are better off being dismissed because they come from a place of bias and anger? There are some pretty clear examples of both, but there's also a lot of gray, and I worry sometimes that it's kind of an inevitability that any online community will eventually just kind of hit an echo chamber status, and we won't be getting anything out of them. But hopefully that's not the case, and maybe it's something we can just stay aware of. Like, maybe we should consider our sources when the Bernie Sanders subreddit says that everyone they know is going to vote Sanders for president in 2016, or when someone who's had a lot of success on YouTube claims that traditional networks are all but dead. And we also need to remember that if we can't refute a claim with fact, maybe we should consider our stance on that claim. And if we can refute a claim with fact, and it falls on deaf ears, we need to learn when it's okay to let go. If we can do that, and keep considering people to be, you know, people, and also encourage other people to do the same, I think not only do we get better online communities, we get better people. I'll see you guys later.